Imagine the year is 2021, it's late October and Update 5 has just released on Experimental. So there's no blueprints, no spire coast and nuclear power plants needed 300 water per minute. That's when I started making this. I think it took around 6 months to complete and even then none of the aforementioned yet exists. Here we are. Before we go in, I just want to prove to you that this is actually producing 630 gigawatts. I'm sure you believe me, but I'd feel happier knowing we can trust each other. At the top of this ladder, you can see all the reactors. Actually, let's go up this ladder and get a better view. They're all off at the moment, the steam is just always there regardless. Anyway, I should probably turn them on. So here is a power um, switch for all the reactors. As you can see, it's currently off, so I'll go ahead and flip the switch. It's wired up to pumps that act as valves to stop water flowing into the reactors. And uh, give it a second. There we go, 630 gigawatts. There's a small amount of fluctuation. I think that's due to power slugs or something. Anyway, let's get on with the tour. Let's see what it's like inside. So it's been about a year since I built this and I can't really remember its layout. And this place is an absolute labyrinth. But that's okay, because I made a map out of signs which is right over here. Oh, by the way, this is the second floor we're on now. So there's a floor below. A third floor above us and above that is the roof which has the 252 reactors. So we are here, apparently. Over there is the corridor of pain, which sounds nice. Oh also it might be hard to tell but you saw how wide this building is from the outside. It's about 1.5 kilometers wide I think. Yeah it's a square building so it goes back 1.5 kilometers as well. Four layers so there's a floor space of around 9 square kilometers. So needless to say, I'm not going to show you around the entire factory, that would take forever. Now I'm going to do an abridged version through this, so the video doesn't end up taking 5 hours. But if you want to take a look around this build yourself, I've put a link to the save file in the description so you can explore at your own leisure. This is the cafeteria, or just like a space with tables in it. There was some pale berries on these tables, but they appear to have been eaten by the staff. You'll see some roaming about at some point, probably. Um, I know I built this, and I made a map, but I still have no idea how to get anywhere. Let's just hope this is the right way. Oh! A doggo! A wild doggo appeared. Hello, friend. You wanna... know? No? Um, come here, come on, little pat to the head, oh no, he ran away, where are you going little guy, oh well whatever, so this is a room making stators by the look of it, and I also forgot to put lights in this room, cool, so back to the car, oh these things by the way, it's like just an aesthetic, just like if an employee tore their hazmat suit or the filter ran out, I mean, the crates are empty, but it's the thought that counts. Onwards. Oh, another map. This was before blueprints, so I painstakingly recreated the map again from a screenshot of the other map, which was fun. So where the hell are we? Uh, still don't know where the hell I want to be going though. This way is... Oh, Mr. Doggo friend, come here friend! I'll use a berry this time. Oh, he walked off. Where are you going? Oh, just, just pick up my berry. Oh, there's three of them now. Let's see if we can catch them all. Come on, that's right. Yes. No, why are you running? Why are you running? Why are you 
running. Okay, I'll try again. Okay, slowly. There we go. You're my friend now. Now and forever. Oh, this, by the way, is the emoji wall. Where did the other one go? Is it round here? No? Maybe this way. Um, let's not go that way, actually. Whatever, enough procrastinating. Back to the car. Bye-bye, doggy friends. Oh, they're still following. Where to go? Let's try going upstairs. Oh, well, I should have seen that coming. So this is upstairs. There are some things and a dead end. Okay. In here. Oh, size matters. It's a big truck. I wonder how it fits through the door. There's some coupons here too. Let's see if it's got any. Oh, a whole two coupons. I definitely need those, as you can see. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's not talk about this. Oh, a doggo friend. Let's see if you found me anything. Oh, it's an avocado. Thanks. Don't know why that's poking into the corridor. And I'm back here again. Okay, uh, I'll show you this room. This is one of my favourite rooms. This is where all the waste gets turned into plutonium. And I just love the sound of these particle accelerators. So cool. Probably noticed by now there's lots of pointless things placed randomly in the corridors. So the reason for this was because I built the rooms and left spaces in between for the corridors. But the sizes of the rooms were dictated by the process inside and I didn't have the foresight or patience to figure out exactly how big the rooms were going to be so I just built them and the gaps left over. Some, well, some were bigger than others but still too small to be for another room so I made a thing to fill the gap. Like this skate park for example. It definitely doesn't belong in a nuclear power plant, but there was a large space here and I needed to fill it with something and I couldn't think of anything else to put here. Whee! <laughs> it's harder than it looks. Oh, I'm no good at this. Fuck! Damn stupid penguins! That's enough of that. Alright, on with the tour. So here I placed a model replica of the tilted bridge you saw in the intro, if you were paying attention. It's not to scale, but the basic structure is the same. The idea was that since the bridge needs to go quite significantly uphill, I thought, well why not make a normal suspension bridge with one support in the middle, and then just tilt the whole thing like a seesaw. So that's what I did. Okay, downstairs we go. It's a few stairs. So how about some numbers? Alright, let's see. The factory is built on the water, so the first thing I built was the water extractor room. In here, there are 663 water extractors, 630 for the reactors, another 30 for things like sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and wet concrete, and the other three are in a separate room, which I'll explain later. So this was the first part of the factory I built, and everything else is built on top, so this room is the footprint size of the entire factory. What do you think? Should we ride it? Seems kind of long. That's what she said. Oh, I immediately regret this decision. Hmm, 
that was interesting. Well, at least we know what this bin is for. Just uh, empty your uh, guts out. Moving on. Okay, this is my favourite room. It's one of the first rooms I made, and I made it look good. I love pipes. Look how they just look so good. And I hid all the power cables and these beams so it's nice and tidy. And I love how the catwalks are just the right height for the little viewing windows on the blenders so you can see it all sloshing around in there. You see, I made the whole building specifically to accommodate the exhaust vents on the refiners. You see, the roof is open to let the fumes vent outside. And we arrive at the Corridor of Anxiety. So called because, well, you'll see. In we go. Uh, it's so bright. Jesus. And we're through. Whew. And back to the entrance. Right, let's go outside for a bit. Let me explain the train setup I've got. It looks pretty complicated, and that's because it is. So, in the beginning, God create no. In the beginning, I had just these ten stations: one track leading in and one track leading out. All the trains shared the same track. It worked pretty well, but I have 40 trains, four trains for each station. So as soon as another train, say there's a copper train in the train station and another train comes down the track and it's Caterium, that's fine, it goes into the Caterium station. But then the next train comes and it's another copper train. And then where's it going to go? It can't go into the station until the other train leaves, so it just sits at the signal and waits, blocking the track and backing up all the other trains. But I anticipated this. I made ten more paths before I made these waiting bay stations as alternate paths for the other trains to go around if there's one in the way. But unfortunately, trains don't work like that in this game. When a train leaves a station, it has already decided its route, which is always the shortest path and they don't consider other trains on the track. So I needed a way to force them to wait on the other tracks, so I made these waiting bays. So each type of train, copper, iron, sulphur, etc, has its own bay it's directed to and since there's nothing to pick up or drop off, if the next station's destination is clear, it barely stops and as long as there aren't trains occupying the next block, they'll move straight through. It works pretty well and I'm pretty happy with it. But, 40 trains is a lot. And there could potentially be 3 trains waiting in a bay and there's just not enough room for that and I'd still have the same issue I had before. Plus, the trains take quite a long time dropping off their crap, so I was like, how can I get it to go faster? More drop-off stations. And I thought, well these waiting bays are already stations, so why not just make them actual drop-off stations for two of the trains and the other two go through the original stations. But of course that really doesn't solve the backing up issue, so I thought, Fuck it, I'll add another set of 10 stations onto the other side, split the tracks into two, so I have 20 stations, two tracks in, two tracks out, enough space in the waiting area for two trains each. And it should be all gravy, right? Uh, well, it is now, but my god, the amount of dicking around just to get the track laid out in this way was unreal. There were so many little segments of track here, and getting them all to connect, and having the end at the right places so I can place the signal, figuring out where I need the signals, Jesus, it was an ordeal. I went through so many iterations of signal patterns to get this right, and like at one point there were signals on every little piece of track, and I was thinking, I'm just massively overthinking this, and all I need is just like one path signal, and the whole thing can be its own block, and then the trains will just figure it out. Well. No, I mean, it, it works like that, but it's so painfully slow and inefficient. So I added another signal, and another, and another, and eventually ended up with this. And honestly, I think it probably could be better, and I'm sure there's at least one person willing to point out all the ways I've done this wrong, but I just don't care anymore. It works well enough, and I'm happy with that. Anyway, this station here, Oversight Station. So before I did all that train stuff, I calculated all the stuff I'd need for this factory and all the resources I would have to get 
and using the most optimal alternate recipes, I got it down to just 9 resources. I wanted as few types of train as possible because I knew I would need a lot of trains. After maybe 600 hours of building this factory, I got to the last process to turn waste into plutonium and I realised my oversight. I somehow completely missed the last process completely. I had encased plutonium cells, not plutonium fuel rods. And I was like, fuck. So I went and looked on the wiki at what I needed to make them into fuel rods and I was like, hmm, heat sinks. I need aluminium for that. Okay, well what about the alternate recipe? No, I st still need aluminium for that. So the whole factory with all of its alternate recipes, specifically avoiding aluminium, was basically a complete waste of time because I have to make aluminium for the plutonium anyway. So now I need more electromagnetic control rods, heat sinks, steel beams, and even though I'm already making some of the stuff required, I specifically made just enough. So I need more. And at this point, honestly, I stopped playing. I was so frustrated I just couldn't anymore. I thought on it for a while and I came back with the idea to just do one dedicated train for all the missing materials and just slap it on the end of the other stations. And the extra little slither of factory behind it would be to make all the crap for this one stupid thing. So now I have a seven carriage train that picks up copper, coal, bauxite, deuterium and iron and I made the slither factory and now the whole factory is done and I just need to build the track around the entire map to bring all the resources here. So I did that and I powered all the trains on with geothermal and they all start going and everything works and I'm ecstatic. So I go around the factory checking everything is working properly. There's a few missing conveyors and power connections here and there but just a couple minor bugs and it's, it's all going relatively smoothly. And then I get to the oversight part and nothing is working. I'm like, hmm, what the fuck is this? And I trace it all the way back to the smelters and somehow Caterium is in the copper lines and copper is in the Caterium lines. I'm like, well, how the fuck did that happen? So I ride the oversight train around the entire map to make sure it doesn't mess up which carriage gets which resource and it's all fine so I don't get how it happened and then when I get back to the factory and the train docks I realise what the issue is the train comes in facing forward but leaves in reverse so on its second loop around the map the first carriage is now the last carriage and all the resources are going into the wrong containers I had an oversight in my oversight, so I think, well, I can't have the train loop around and come out of the station forwards because I just built a factory behind it, there's no room. So how can I spin the train around? Maybe another station? So way over there, where that road goes to that unfinished looking building, I put another station for the oversight train so I can go in, reverse out and make it face forward again. Okay. So it all works now, right? Well, kind of. And that's where I began adding the other 10 stations to the other side. And I moved the spin station over here to tidy up a bit. So it was a long, stressful process and it's only maybe 60% efficient, but it's a thing that I built and I made it work and that's good enough for me. So there is a lot more to show in this factory and a lot of rooms, so instead of going to each room one by one, I've thrown together a little montage for you. Uh, all the numbers you see on screen are parts per minute and rounded up for simplicity, so sometimes there's a process making like 420.69 of the thing, so I just rounded it up to 421 for readability.
So thanks for watching, and like I said before, if you're interested, I've put a link to the save file in the description so you can have a look around yourself, or use it to gauge how good your PC is, because I have a reasonably good PC, it's not the dog's bollocks, but it's certainly above average, and I get around 35 FPS inside the factory, so yeah. There's also plenty of hidden rooms and a hidden fifth floor, which hides most of the conveyor logic aka spaghetti and there's also several random little easter eggs and silly references if you look hard enough so have fun with that and that's it i guess bye bye now hope to see you again for the next one <laughs>